Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I'm day drinking. Shepard sent us this. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. So, what we did these guys before? These are the Oregon Grain Growers brand distillery. We had their experimental yeah, batch. Yeah, the experimental yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is their one that they call Cabbage Hill. It's and it's a wheat whiskey. They did uh, the they Hope do a triticalele whiskey under the Cabbage Hill, Tr Tr right? Triticalele. Yeah. Anyway, this is their wheat whiskey. Mm -hmm. uh, Eighty percent soft white winter wheat mm -hmm. and. 20% malted barley. The wheat okay. comes from Bracker Farms, or B-R-A-C-H-E-R. -E I always like it when they tell us that. We can say, we can name a farmer. Um, so, woo, there's that punk. Yes, uh, if I remember correctly, they did experimental stuff, which if you're wrapping your arms around this idea of experimental and you're ready to go on funky adventures, it'll deliver a funky adventure. Yeah. But they also proofed you to the floor. What's, yeah. the, what's the proof on that? This one's 45. Okay, so it's not 40. Interesting. Interesting. It does have that sort of like slightly sour grain green note. Yeah, it's I say very grainy. Yeah. Yeah, very grainy. It's almost forward. It's almost punchy with the uh, the the grainy funkiness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, you know, it reminds me of uh, some of your funkier, weirder beers. Yeah, and I'm wondering how old this is, because sometimes like that can age out, mm -hmm. but you gotta let it. So in the experimental stuff, do they not give you like the, no. the stats for the? Maybe they do on their website somewhere, but not on the bottle. And then there's one other thing beyond this kind of punchy grain forward. What it's not it? a. It's 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 in the direction of cinnamon candy, but it's not cinnamon. I know what you mean. I, I, best I can trot out is maybe like a wicker type of deal. Yeah. I want to like this so much more because I love the idea of what they're doing. Palette's nice. Oh, yeah. I think I remember that being the case in the other one too. Yeah, I think so. Nose, not a fan. It's still too fresh and raw. And, but the palate has this really soft sweetness that's not pure sugar. Right. The, the grain notes are buried behind that. So here's the thing, and I think the la the first time we had this, mm -hmm. you weren't feeling it much, mm -mm. but I'm saying if they are in fact leaning into this idea of an experiment. Right. So well, experiments generally aren't there to be crafted perfect little specimens for you to just fall in love with. It's right. to be an exploration of flavors. And in this sense, they're doing, you know, some some wheat and what have you. Uh, and I think in terms of an exploration, it does present an interesting angle on whiskey flavors. What's really weird is that it has an aftertaste that's similar to Honey Nut Cheerios. Okay, yeah. So even like the grain again just doubles down on the very yeah. end. That's a weird thing to pop up, but yeah. There's almost a tannin quality to that. It's dry. Yeah. But it's not woody, wood note. It's just dry. It's a mm. little dry. Mm. That's bizarre. So it's it's wheat. One might say, how bizarre. Da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da. Uh, so this is Oregon wheat. Right? Mm -hmm. A lot of wheat whiskey has been something that's more of a, it's a cherry and it's a bready and there's a softness to it. Yeah. This, I'm not getting cherry. Nope. And the only breadiness I get is like, it's just grain. Yeah. Grain, just grain, grain. On the nose, grain. mostly. Yeah. Huh. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. You know what? This is the kind of thing, since the nose is so much different than the taste, if we put a few drops of water in here, maybe it does. Maybe, but at maybe. 45, I'm betting, if I had to bet money on this, yeah. I would say the palate gets closer to the nose with water. Okay. I would bet we lose and a we little. And we like the palate better than the nose. Yeah. I would bet we lose a little of the sugar hmm. and get back and get more grain. Pedro Garza, can you just say in one word if you recommend it or not? Uh, that would be a very short episode. It will. And also, if everybody was the same, and yeah, if we were all like carbon copies, it's situational, man. Yeah, we regularly say we don't prefer something, but yeah, yeah, no, we, not that we don't recommend it. Yeah, like who? It's just like two people <sighs> giving their opinion of what they enjoy. And that's 
going to be wildly hit or miss in terms of whether or not that has, has any relevance to you. So we're trying to uh, describe it in ways that if we start naming notes that you were fond of, then it's like, oh, I could like that. Mm -hmm. We try to separate that. We try to make that a bit independent from whether or not we personally enjoy a thing. But if something's like not good, not good, we're going to let you know. But one word, I was like, come on. Try that. Yeah. And exactly what I thought would happen happened. I can't recommend it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's too many words. No. <laughs> so no, don't add water. Yeah, it's the the palate turns into the nose. The sweetness buries. And grain comes forward. Yeah, and it is like it's not quite sour. I get what you mean. It's mm -hmm. not quite sour, but it is mm -hmm. like that sour, well, not quite sour. Yeah. That funky grain. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Like if the if it was the, the grain was in a grain bin, it was damp for yep. a while. Like the dampness kind of, you know, got in there and funked it up. I agree. Funk it funked it up. Funk. Don't funk mess that up, up YouTube auto-generating funk, text. It Funked it up. Funked it up. Uh, Reagan Mannix, at this point, if I visited Crowded Burrow, it would be 90% for the opportunity to run into Fancy Dan. <laughs> Love his work. Fancy Dan on the vault. He does some good work there. You, know, you, you don't get to uh, run into him. You meet his handlers, <laughs> and they'll stiff arm you right out of the... Out of the way, you'll see Fancy Dan. You'll be walking from your hand out, and you just get cold cocked from the side <laughs> angle with a some guy in glasses. <laughs> he's got an earpiece. He's got an earpiece, and he's like, "Sir," <laughs> just takes him out. Uh, so, if you want to go exploring, mm -hmm. this is how I will recommend it in not one word. If you're looking to go exploring in whiskey, and mm. uh, people are doing experiments and stuff, then this could be worth exploring. Here's what I would recommend: if you're looking for something that is just nice and familiar and comfortable, nah. and beautifully executed and balanced and doing all these things, and it's probably not for you. I would go to the distillery because I'll bet you could do a flight to explore all of these things side by side and you might learn something cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a bottle at a time, that's gonna be a hefty way to explore. I'm trying to remember. Have we ever recommended a whiskey? Have we just said like, I really like it. I don't think we've ever really just say, you should definitely buy this or you should definitely not buy this. No, I don't think I've ever prescribed a call to action. Yeah. All right, here's fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal your liver side. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. us.